Cowboys 2H Smiley N. Pool, staff photographer Dallas Cowboys outside linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch celebrates as he leaves the field following a victory over the Seattle Seahawks in an NFL wildcard playoff football game at it. 5, 2019, in Arlington. The Cowboys won the game 24-22, Smiley N. Pool, the Dallas Morning News by SportsDayDFW.com at SportsDayDFW Here are 10 things you need to know about Cowboys linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch. 1. His interesting collegiate nickname Baby Giraffe. He said he got the nickname from being super skinny and tall during his first couple years at Boise State. He got the nickname from a coach my freshman and sophomore year that was kind of my nickname I guess you could say because of how I was developing, he said on the Ben. I was a twig. I had some developing physically to do, and I did just that. I was long and lanky like a giraffe. My college coach Andy Avalos, the D coordinator there at Boise State gave me that name. It kind of stuck and went through. It died down this year. I don't even know if anyone called me it this year as a junior, more on his other nickname later. Darwin Van Der Esch, friends and family of Cowboys rookie Leighton Van Der Esch pose for a group photo near Grangeville, Idaho. The group traveled aboard the family's bus, dubbed the Van Der Esch Express, from Riggins, Idaho, to Seattle for the Cowboys game on September 23, 2018. Van Der Esch grew up in Riggins, Idaho, population 410, set deep in a canyon where the Salmon and Little Salmon Rivers converge. Fishing, whitewater rafting, jet boat races and the rodeo highlight the community calendar. Layton's father, Darwin, is the mastermind behind the 40-foot bus that doubles as a billboard on wheels. Layton's name and achievements are emblazoned in vinyl displays on the exterior of the bus, an eBay find Darwin purchased in 2014. He wanted to transport supporters the three hours down to Boise State to watch Layton, a former walk-on, play on the Boise State's famed blue turf in person. Darwin also hoped to raise the profile of his son and, by virtue, others who hail from small towns like Riggins. The ride is a 1992 MCI coach that Darwin booked for $14,000 after keeping an eye on the market for some time. This one made for a good deal, he said, with about 500,000 miles logged in a comfortable former life in Southern California, transporting passengers to and from an Amtrak station in Disneyland. Some of the seats have been removed from the 53-passenger bus to create space for cuts and the propane stove Darwin and Sandy have had since they were married 35 years ago. Layton, who rode the bus home from his final two bowl games at Boise State, the Cactus Bowl and Las Vegas Bowl, I wasn't sure what to think of his dad's purchase at first, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, said Layton, who would get in a quick visit with the bus passengers after Sunday's game before they headed back to Riggins, but it's pretty neat. It's pretty special having support like that, having a big locomotive for everybody to jump on and go to games together. To read more about Heropolis' journey on the Van Der Esch Express, click here. Point 3. His three sisters Kate Heropolis, Steph Layton Van Der Esch's sisters Kristen, Left, Morgan and Shannon, right chat during the trip to watch the Cowboys rookie play in Seattle. Family and friends took the family bus dubbed the Van Der Esch Express from their hometown of Riggins, Idaho, to Seattle for the game. Van Der Esch has three older sisters, Kristen, Morgan and Shannon. Layton is six years younger than his youngest sister. A Statesman story by Dave Southorn said that Van Der Esch's biggest influences in his life are this three older sisters. Morgan told Southorn that her little brother has the biggest heart from Southorn. Probably the best example of that is when he got his driver's license, Layton volunteered to do something most adults don't even want to do. He said whenever his sisters wanted to go out for a night on the town, he'd come pick them up. And he did, even in the wee hours of the morning, we definitely took him up on that a couple of times, Kristen said. We'd pick on him a bit when he was little, but he still always wanted to be around. Another wild fact from the Statesman story, Layton's conditioning routine in Idaho involved literally running up and down mountains. Point 4. 
hoop skills Vander Esch was also a multi-sport athlete, according to the Idaho Statesman. The publication said he was a played four years of varsity basketball winning two state championships in both basketball and football. He also ran track, did the high jump, and, according to Southorn, his sister said, he could be in the X Games as a snowmobile jumper if he really wanted, and is seen below, he's got some ups. Van Der Esch led the Cowboys in tackles as a rookie with 102 total, the next closest was Jalen Smith at 82. He credited his time playing eight-man football with his success as a rookie. I think that's one of the things I've always really prided myself on is just being a sure tackler, Van Der Esch said. I think it goes all the way back to high school, playing eight-man ball. There's a lot of tackles you have to make in space, people can believe me if they want to believe me, but I know the majority probably won't because they probably overlook eight-man football. I know that taught me a lot, being able to make plays in space. Defense was not the only position he played in eight-man football, either. From the ringers Robert Mays, in eight-man football, only three down linemen are ineligible receivers on offense, and outside linebackers double as cornerbacks on defense. Van Der Esch spent most of that first season filling the latter role, but during the team's first playoff game, Van Der Esch's high school coach Charlie Shepard decided to make a drastic change. Sam and Rivers' offense couldn't move the ball against Garden Valley High, and in a last-ditch effort, the coach threw in Van Der Esch as a replacement quarterback. He went out there and brought his back, gave us a chance, an opportunity to win that game at the end, Shepard says. I'd have to say that game was when I really decided, or really opened my eyes that, yes, this kid is, he's a little bit above average. He's a special talent, 6. His first job here is what Van Der Esch told the Dallas Morning News' Michael Hogue, I was a ref guide on the Salmon River back home in Riggins, Idaho. It's a good river. It's got class 4 rapids. It was fun. I got to meet people from all over the country who were coming in to raft. I did it for about five years, check out other first jobs for Cowboys in the 2018 draft class here.7. The Wolf Hunter you've probably seen Van Der Esch howl after making a big play on the field. You might have also seen a photo of Van Der Esch draped a real wolf head and fur over his shoulder and posed with his fiancée, Maddie Tucker, captioning the Instagram photo, just the wolf and his fox, how did that come to be? Dallas coaches coined the nickname for their eventual first-round pick during the draft process when he showed them a photo of wolves he'd hunted in Alaska with his father. Read more about the wolf hunter nickname here, from an interview with Dave Damshek on NFL.com. Van Der Esch, I walked in there, and, instead of shaking everybody's hands introducing yourself and everything getting settled in a little bit, they just told me to sit down. They had one chair in the middle of the room. They just said, sit down, that was pretty much it. Check, sounds like the beginning of one of the born movies or something. Van Der Esch, it was weird. I sat down and everybody was around me in a circle. I was sitting there waiting for it to start. Everybody got quiet and the one guy just started firing questions. Him check, like you're playing duck, duck, goose or something. Weird, Van Der Esch, but I was in the middle of the circle. I wasn't part of the circle. He told me four words. I had to remember those four words for the whole meeting. He told me to start at 100 and subtract 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4 like as fast as I could go in the amount of time I was given, the rest of the questions were a bunch of weird questions. I got one that said, I got a bottle and there's a quarter in the bottle and there's a cork in the top. How do I get the quarter out? And I said, I'd squeeze the bottle so it pops to the cork out, and I thought I was right. I was like, I got this one, and he was like, a glass bottle, and looked at me like I was dumb or something, is it just us, or does he look like that from, Blue Mountain State, Sports Illustrated Zandy Benoit profiled the Van Der Esch family and their love of ski shooting. In his story, he described their love for the outdoors life, the Van Der Esch home is like a taxidermied zoo. Every room is decorated with hunting trophies, from elk, mountain lion, various deer, chamois, lynx and wolves. 
and in storage are more of these animals, plus black bears, brown bears and buffalo. Antlers are displayed all over, casually mixed in with family portraits, coasters and throw pillows. Where there's not a dead animal there's some sort of Boise State memorabilia. Layton was the only kid who spent high school in this house before that, the family lived about three minutes down the road, on the other side of the river, family friends bought that place and moved in in 2013, but you get the sense it wouldn't be weird if Evander Esch waltzed through their old front door without knocking. Almost everyone in Regans knows everyone, and certainly everyone knows the Van Der Eschs. Darwin, a consummate patriarch, for 18 years has run a professional hunting business, first in Idaho, which he sold in 2010, and now Alaska, where he travels for two months stretches in spring and fall. He's a revered outdoorsman and in Regans, that's the equivalent of being a renowned banker in New York or award-winning movie executive in Los Angeles. According to the ringer's Robert Mays, Van Der Esch grew six inches over a 12-month span. And it wasn't all fun for the linebacker, my legs, my hips, my back, everything hurt, Van Der Esch says. I couldn't run. I could not run. It was miserable. 